I mean, uh, how did you get shot? Um, That's the obvious question. Well, I, like I said before, we've you know I, I've known him for a while. We've worked together, um, and uh, on and basically he had read the script. Once I finished it, I was like, hey, send this to Tom Stoppard, which I'm not sure if he did, but um, I, he told me he was like, Tom Stoppard says thank you. So I was like, Ooh. he probably said thank you for the script. But anyway, so Sean had read the script and he liked it, and because we worked together before. And we, I trusted him, and I trusted his musical, um, you know, ability and his taste and everything. So um, it was kind of easy because as I was actually as I was filming, he was sort of writing these songs, and we were going back and forth together over that. Um, and you know, he had similar um, influences just in his music, like you know, Ennio Morricone and like these sort of older, like you know, great composers who use a lot of different influences from jazz and, and classical. You know, so was he working to Rush's or were you cutting to his music? Um, a little bit of both. To be honest, it was the, what, the what, end, what was the end product was really kind of like an instrumental album that we had sort of, that maybe I had like inspired, <clears throat> or the film had inspired, that Sean created. And then, I mean, I was editing this film for a long time because of budget issues, and I mean, it was really a year of post-production, which is my first film, so I'm not sure if that was like a long time or a short time, but it felt felt long. And also some of the special effects shots, we actually hadn't planned any um, extra graphics afterwards when we were filming it. I kind of tried to shoot it so that we might not need them, which is... I was really happy with everybody's response when the bones dropped. <laughs> so I was like, my like, oh, okay, let's do it, let's make it fun, you know, if we can't, you know, really get like the Buffy effect. <laughs> and so, anyway, so then, yeah, so I ended up sort of, I ended up, and, and then I actually ended up putting some of my own music in the film, again, because of the rights thing, as I didn't have money to license other music. Um, and I, you know, it was fun to Oh, uh, uh, oh, yes? Can you explain why Charlotte's character kept changing her accent? Yeah, yeah. You don't, it wasn't obvious? She's <laughs> a disguise. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, when I met with the actress, the character was originally English. When I met with the actress, she has a voiceover. Well, I, it was a funny story. Bijou was supposed to play that part, Bijou Phillips. And she, um, she got booked on another film and was paying her a lot of money and you know, so she did the cameo in the beginning, and I had to cast somebody the night before we were filming that scene, and I met with three different actresses, and the one I went with was, ended up being like a, a very successful commercial actress, Geneva Carr, and she, she like, I, I was kind of amazed at her ability to sort of, you know, do these different accents, and, I, and then I was like, well, maybe it'll help your disguise, and we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, you know, there were inevitably problems later on, and. Actually, I kind of, looking back at it, I kind of wish that in the last scene, when she has the black outfit on, black hair, the Irma Vep look, that she had a German accent. <laughs> I might have been overdoing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted to say that I actually have a bag full of um, some promotional materials, like plastic fangs with the name of the film on and some stickers, and, and not Sean's record, but a record that I made, and I'd love to give to, to you guys on, the, on your way out or whatever. Time for a couple of more, and then we got to clear the theater for uh, the next one. Oh, that's John Ventimiglia. Yeah, he he's a great actor. He's um he actually plays Artie Bucco in The Sopranos, um, and has a mustache and is bald. Yeah, he's great. Another question before we wrap up. Oh, you wrote the whole thing here. Thank you. That is, it's a beautiful work. Thanks so much. Did you put the subtitles in later, or did you write off the subtitles? Subtitles. Oh, the title cards. Oh, the title cards. Um, it was something that was kind of a little bit in the, the first draft, and we took it out, and then when we were editing the movie, there, 
we decided to put it back in. And we, ch I mean, I came up with some of those titles more recently, but there were always these sort of weird ideas that alluded to the title of the film. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so funny though, like all those titles are so funny. You know, it, uh, it, it's Did you write it all as a joke? Well, I mean, I, I felt that like that they, it, you know, the the if you if you Google like a, the list of the hundred top plays, you always see Rosencrantz, Guildenstern, or Dead is up there, and I just felt that like in, if it sort of reflected Julian's subconscious, like what would he be, sort of punning on in his mind, like what other plays would be happening, what other books. The in job interview with the vampire is the only one that's a little bit not like a, No, I mean, well, yeah, right, his internet wasn't down. It's a lie. Anyway, thanks, thanks so much. <laughs>